All right, we're gonna look at the normal distribution. And what we have here is the probability density function for the normal distribution. Basically, if you plot the histogram for a data set, and that data set is normally distributed, the histogram would follow this shape. But we're not gonna do many things with this formula here. What we really care about is this notation on the left side. This notation is what's important to us. When you see this notation, you know that capital N tells you you're dealing with the normal distribution, and the two parameters here that are inside of these parentheses are the mean of the normal distribution, mu, and the variance of the normal distribution, sigma squared, respectively. So when you see this notation, you know they're specifically talking about a normal distribution. One specific normal distribution that we'll get into that's very important is the standard normal distribution. And the standard normal distribution is simply that same distribution with the mean equal zero and a standard deviation or, yeah, standard deviation of one. So the standard deviation is the square root of the variance. So that means the variance is also one. So in this notation, we know it's a normal distribution with mu or the mean equals zero, so that's why that goes first. And the variance is the square, or one times one, of the standard deviation. So that's why this is the variance of one. Now, if you plug those things in to this original formula, mu is zero, sigma is one, then it breaks down to this new formula. You'll notice that they replace x with z. Well, that's standard, or <laughs> when you're looking at the standard normal distribution, instead of the quantiles being represented by x, the quantiles will be represented by z. So this is what we call the probability density function, this function right here, the probability density function for the standard normal distribution. This symbol is a lowercase phi, and z, of course, is the independent variable because we switched from x to z. So, if you have a specific z-score, a specific value of z, which represents the number of standard deviations away from the mean, but if you have a specific value of z, then this function would be one of the points on the actual curve. So that function, if you plugged in a specific z-value, for instance, it would give you the value of that ordered pair on the curve. That is the lowercase phi. On the other hand, we also have the uppercase phi of z. So you can see the difference between lowercase phi and uppercase phi here. The difference between those symbols mathematically in this statistics class is that the lowercase phi represents the density function or just the, the actual bell curve here, the actual curve itself. On the other hand, uppercase phi of z represents the area, that pink area, between that density curve the x-axis, and the vertical line x equals z. So all this area over here, all that area, is represented by the symbol capital Phi of z. Now we're going to calculate capital Phi of z, and normally you'd use either a table or a calculator, some calculus maybe. We're going to use the computer. We're going to use Python. So to calculate that pink area to the left of that z-score underneath the density function of the standard normal distribution, we use the science Python library. So we're going to import scipy.stats as stats. We're going to be using that scipy.stats library a lot. And the one we're going to use now, the method of the stats library is stats.norm.cdf, which is the cumulative distribution function that we just learned about, z. So this cumulative distribution function is this uppercase phi of z. And when I plug that z value in, it's going to, this, this Python uh, method of the stats.norm is going to actually just give me that pink area. So that z, so you see the symbol here, says sketch the region corresponding to the statement. Well, that region, from what we just learned, is the region to the left of the value, negative 1.2. So negative 1.2 is the region to the left. Yours probably won't be set up nicely like that. You'll have to scroll it over to negative 1.2, and that's what that represents. So that symbol represents that specific area. So 
Now, instead of giving me the symbol for the area and asking me what the area is, or sorry, instead of giving me the symbol for the area and asking me to draw or sketch the area, now they're ask, actually asking, what is that blue area to the left of negative 1.2? In order to do that, we're going to use Python. So instead of using tables, we're just going to use Python. So here's Python. As you can see, I typed in that code, import scipy.stats as stats that I'm going to call the stats object and the CDF function of it specifically and what goes inside of these parentheses is the quantile value or Z which is given here as negative 1.2 so I'm going to type in negative 1.2 here and then when I press run and I run this it actually gives me the area to the left of negative 1.2 and that area is about 0 0.1151 if I round it to four decimal places. And that would be the probability or the proportion of the values in the sample that are to the left of negative 1.2. Basically, this means that negative 1.2 is the 11th percentile, or I guess if you round this, it would be the 12th percentile, the value separating the bottom 11 percent that should be a decimal point one one what was that point one one five one five one so it separates the bottom 11.51 percent from the top 88 and change percent so that's how you use that normal cdf